peace and grand rising to the air. Today is December the 17th, 1440 on the sun calendar, 1441 on the moon calendar, and 2020 on the Greco-Roman calendar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear the, the air here. So... I'm excited because we just finished our three-day nationwide fast. And um, the question came to my mind, what, when was the last time you heard of an entire nation declaring and proclaiming a fast? For the whole nation. Um, Hold on for just one moment. Hold on for just one moment. Okay. When was the last time (laughs) you heard of an entire nation proclaiming a sovereign fast? That's how I know that um, that we got this. We got this. In the chat, I see you. That's, That's unheard of. That in in and of itself is history making and her story making. Yes, Empress in the chat. Yes. So, um, we're going to continue to. There'll be a lot of first. There'll be a lot of that. But in reality, our ancestors used to do things like that all the time, spiritually, to keep us grounded and connected together. We would do things like that because they knew, they knew that a well-disciplined nation is unstoppable. Our ancestors were so disciplined that you could not, unhook them. You couldn't unhook them from one another, spiritually nor in, you know, on this plane. And some people say, well, well, you know, why did they fall? They didn't really, that's not, don't, that's not the real story. Because had they done that, we would not be able to stand and proclaim, and it happened the way we say it. They they made it so that all we had to do was stand, stand, and speak. That's all we have to do, stand and speak. That's how, and when we stood and speak, when we stood and spoke, the energies would do what they need to do. Yes, yes. All of that in the chat. Justice Israel, Congress, all standing together, speaking together. They knew that the best way to stay together and to continue molding into the one mind, returning to the one mind, is to be well disciplined and to be disciplined together. Many of us were previously in the military. And yes, with one voice, Justice Niel, in the military, their whole training is so that everyone can be one and do the same thing and and look out for one another and all of that. No man left behind, all of that. Well, Teamwork, yes. Unity, yes. Empress Portia, teamwork. 
just as shares a rail, unity. Yes. And that's a part of, see, we taught them that. We taught them that. We taught them things that they can do in order to create cohesion together so that nothing can come between us. We taught them that. And that might scare some, but it shouldn't. Because even as we are jointed and fitted together, we're still sovereign, each one of us. So we still keep our sovereign status and keep maintain our sovereignty. And our and what a sovereign says goes because sovereigns are always going to speak in accordance with the law, the sovereign supreme law of the land. Yes. Ooh, Empress Torsha, that's powerful. She said in the chat, they can't teach us anything. They can only remind us of what we already taught them right there. That's the target you hit. That's the target. You hit it right there, that nail right on the head. A well-disciplined nation is unstoppable. A well-disciplined nation is unstoppable. And even with the fast that was on the 13th, 14th, and 15th, there were some more who missed it. They missed the announcement and some who missed it. And even the ones who didn't start when we started, they said, you know what, better late than never, I'll start when I, when I can start. And they started, some started the day after, some started the night of, some started two days after, still to be in alignment and to, and to, to, to roll in the flow with both of us, with all of us, so that we all stand together. Energetically, we have to stand together so that when it, when our energy manifests on this plane, we're together already. When we manifest energetically in the spirit, it's going to manifest on this plane as unity. And we can disagree and still be unified. Because in the spirit, we're going to do what's right. And when we do what's right, as above, so below. As above in the spirit, so below here on this plane. That does, just as Theodore, create the synergy of our nation. It creates the synergy for our nation. And that's what fasting together is all about. Because even during the fast, um, sometimes when my stomach would growl, I would go and grab a bunch of water to drink and I think to myself, the rest of the nation is fasting with me, so I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> I see the chat. <laughs> They're doing it, so I got to stick to it. I can't go back on, on the, whole, the whole. That's what this is about. Yes. <laughs> yes, a water sandwich. <laughs> yes. So... And then that thought process is going to carry over whatever we're doing. When we're doing our demonstrations, it's going to carry over that. The rest of the nation is doing it too, so I'm going to do it. I can do it. I'm strong enough. And if I feel a little weak, I'm going to pick up the phone or get in the conveyance and, and, make, and connect with the Moors. And that's how we get stronger as a nation. That's how we stand. It's, it's powerful. There's synergy for each one of us when we know that we're all doing it at the same time. Doing it at the same time helps us in each one, and then each one of us doing it helps the whole nation. It's, 
it's a it's a beautiful cycle circle that's unbreakable. So, um, with the fast, we set some intention. With the fast, we set some intention, and we. Um, The intentions were to let go as a nation and each one of us, both jointly and severally. That means together and each one of us. Um, we made, we set our intention to let go of any energies that no longer served us. Really? Okay, Justice Mecca L in the chat, we, we'll have to talk about that because I did not know that, that that was going on at the same time. I'm so not surprised. But we set our intention to let go of any energy that no longer served us. And that's an ongoing process. We're going to keep letting go of those energies because sometimes we let go and they try to pop back in and they try to manifest through others and things like that. And we let them go. And then so we continue to let them go. And we're stronger at letting them go when we fast together, when we do it together. And then if there's something that I need to let go of, an energy that I need to let go of, all I have to do is think the rest of the nation is letting go of things, so I'm, I can do it too. And that's how we get stronger and stronger and stronger. So with setting our intention to let things go, um, Justice Micah L., I did not know that, but I'll read what you put in the chat unless you want to say. If you want to say something, star six to unmute so that so that you can mention it. I did not know that that was happening, but it makes complete sense to me. It, uh, in the chat, Justice Micah L. Tunica L. Bay put fasting also. To, oh yes, go ahead, Justice. Go ahead. Okay, so it's actually me, Kyle. <laughs> so, so it's, sorry. it's formerly Michael, but that's how I um, write it the way that it's supposed to be pronounced, me, Kyle. Islam. Okay, Islam. So yes, um, my wife is actually in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and so, which you know, they're about seven, eight hours you know, in front of us. So, um, but she also joined me in that. Um, I don't know who else actually took place, but uh, this was her first time actually doing, you know, a water fast too and just going through it. So that unity and connection there and that she's got a stand on her, um, you know, nationality as well because she's been nationalized. So we're fighting a different battle right now. Well, it's the same battle, but from a different perspective um, as we are, you know, coming together to, you know, be in the same place territory as well. So, um, yeah, she joined us there. So I'm quite sure it caught fire as well. Um, throughout yeah, so, what's so what and you're saying fasting. is that the, the heirs at Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, fasted for the same three days that we fasted? Islam. Okay, I just wanted to be sure that I that I read that right. And we didn't even talk. Of, I mean, like I don't know who they are, but I know that when the ancestors speak, they don't just speak to us. They speak to, like they don't just speak to the heirs here. They speak to all the heirs at once. Justice Micah, Nika, L. That's that's. Beautiful. That's beautiful affirmation. Because, see, for them to do it as well, 
now we're joined in the spirit. We have not met in in the uh on this dimension, but we've met in the spirit already connected with the heirs at Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, who fasted for the same three days that we did. That's so when we meet them, because I know we'll meet them soon, we're going to meet all the heirs from all over soon. Over time, we're, we're going to be meeting all of them. We're already going to be joined. It, meeting in on this plane is just going to be affirmation of that we're kin, that we're of one blood. So that's that's powerful. That's powerful. So speaking of intentions, anything that we put our intentions to do, anything that we set our intentions on, before, during, and after the past, letting go of, of anything that no longer serves us. We know the corporate does not serve us anymore. We know that. So we're letting that go. We're letting it go. And there is a saying that our Turkish brothers and sisters say in their Turkish language. They say this before each of the meeting of the bays, the Turkish bays. And they open all of their meetings with something that says, Oldin Jaoldaran. And in Turkish, that says, when he intends a thing, he commands it. By When he intends a thing, his command is be, and it is. And here, we would, also, we would change that just a little bit. We would adapt that a little bit and say, Oldin ma olderan, gunilid mizit imangad olderan. Meaning, when she intends a thing, her command is be, and it is because we are matriarchal. But the air, we can say it either way because we already know that we are our brothers and our brothers are us. When we intend a thing, our command is be, and it is. We have done that. We did it. We said, this land needs to get in alignment with the supreme law of the land. And it's happening. So everything is grinding to a halt so that it can get back in alignment, just like we said, just like we told it to do. When we intend a thing as a nation and we put a fast there too, that is powerful. When we intend a thing, our command is B, and it is. So speaking of the intentions now, with each one of us, anything that we intend within our own heart and in our own mind, it may be something for our domicile or it may be a domicile or it may be uh, more unity with those that are around us or whatever, whatever we intend. When we do a nationwide fast like that, and we will do them regularly, you know, as we, you know, as we all decide we want to do it, however we want to do that, um, it's up to all of us, however we want to do it. But when we do it and we have an intention and we put an intention on it, then we know that any intention that we set it's going to not only manifest, but it's going to expand exponentially. So this time around, um, I put a couple of other things with my fast, like um, 
I want to get back to my workout more because for these these last three years that I've been doing, you know, this this beautiful work, I have not been working out as much as I would like to. And I can tell you this, the days that I've worked out in the last probably two weeks, the workout takes on a whole new meaning. It takes on a whole new energy. A whole new energy. And that goes for anything that we set our intentions on. It will take on a whole new energy. And that's why we do it the way we do it. So um, I want to make sure that um, that we're not getting any text messages to open the meeting because we get those frequently throughout the meeting. Um, but we have, I mean, the things that we said that we wanted for our nation and for our vast estate are, are manifesting. We can see that. One of the manifestations, too, that we set initially in the restoration of our land was with regard to the resources on our land. And as we were doing the liens and the court actions and everything was grinding to a halt, I'm sure many of you have heard and seen that trade where things like oil and natural resources are concerned has has essentially ground to a halt. And not only has it ground to a halt, but the waste that was associated with those resources has ground to a halt also. And that was what we needed to happen, is our resources on this land belong to us. They don't need to be wasted. And just because they're so abundant does not mean for anyone to waste them. We're not going to waste them, and we're certainly not going to let foreigners waste them. And so a lot of the fraud, waste, and abuse that was going on with our government national resources has ground to a halt. And that has everything to do with what the heirs have been doing, the work that the heirs have been doing, each one of us. I'm going to unlock the meeting just for a minute because uh, I see if one or two got, uh, got dropped from the meeting. So... We can continue doing what we're doing so that our resources are used properly and so that as we are beginning to take control of our resources, which we absolutely are, that they all go to good use and they honor our ancestors in that manner. Okay. So... Are there any questions about the fast um, or anything of that nature to this point? I do want to say this about the fast also and even about the workout piece. And this one is, is mainly toward the matriarch, for the matriarch. Um, matriarch, we have a particular makeup, genetic makeup, a matrilineal genome. And that's because we birthed the nation. And as we get, uh, as we mature, um, things start to happen in our bodies that we were told for one thing, but it actually turns out to be something else. Um, so for the matriarchs 
who experience things like hot flashes because that has come up. If you're experiencing hot flashes, did you know that hot flashes are actually a burst of energy? Did you know that? And that is why the hot flashes, when they come, if, if matriarchs are asleep, they'll wake up and they can't go back to sleep and they start sweating. Those are specific and they are unique. And so with them being a burst of energy, what do we do with the burst of energy? First, we hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Then go for a walk, do something to get some exercise. Whatever is suitable for you to get some exercise, get some exercise, and then keep doing that for as long as you need to do it, months, weeks, months, days, get exercise regularly and hydrate, hydrate, hydrate and watch what happens. They'll go away and you'll be in better shape. But it's a burst of energy. They said that it was something else. But see, we get a burst of energy that makes it so that we can live longer because it's going to make us do certain things. That burst of energy is, is so that if we need some energy to work out, we get it. If we need energy to govern the household or govern the estate, we get it. That's what that's for. So let's, we can keep that in mind as we move forward because we've been told a lot of stuff that's just not true. And um, there are ways to, to make our lives better with what we know for sure. Okay. So um, having said that, um, I, are there any demonstrations that have been done or that you're planning that you want to discuss or anything that has happened recently that we can talk about? I did get some text messages and some phone calls over the last couple of days about demonstrations that Moors are doing, and some I've not been able to get back to. And so if you want to discuss those now, we can talk about them um, so that whatever the remedy is, it can help anyone else who's having that same, who's doing that same demonstration. Islam. Islam, Empress. <laughs> This is Tatali from the Khalifa Territory. Um, um, there are um, some areas that have new construction communities, mm -hmm. and um, and I lean one of them. There's a house sitting there over over 400 days. So when you talk about waste and not being used and they're wasting my material, that 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 was one of them. And so um, I wanted to. Uh, uh, use their bonds to my advantage, and to just uh, to just uh, shut the uh, the builder down and the construction workers, mm -hmm. um, because they want to block me from the property. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering, uh, how do I use that that bond um, uh, to my advantage? Lean it. Okay. You have to lean it. You okay. have to lean it. Lean that and lean them and lean lean every every claim on that land, lean it. Okay. And then do a court action on everybody that you lean, do a court action on them. Okay. And so when you say lean the bond, so I would, because the bond has, uh, is, uh, is issued by an insurance agency. So am I putting them in the lien with the bond number yes. or, or how, how am I, um, uh, formatting that. Yes. So the insurance, whoever, any corporations and their CEOs 
who have anything to do with that. When you look at the records and you see corporations and CEOs and all of that, Every one of them should be leaned. And to lean the bond, all you do is lean the bond number or the issuer. Well, if you lean the insurance company that issued the bond, you'll get that that will cover the bond because it's going to attach to anything that they do. Okay, great. All right. I'm ready to do that. And I think that um, housing is my thing because I've been at uh, uh, this place for maybe like two years now just mm -hmm. because I'm getting myself together, you know, as and nationalizing and getting all my ducks in a row. And finally I come to this place where now I can start dealing with housing. So uh, I, I want housing just to be my bank, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so, and so, yeah, I, I'll, I'll see how that works out and see if that, if that uh, uh, helps them uh, get their minds right so they can get out my way. Okay. And notify, okay. notify, notify, notify yeah. it all. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay, I yield. Thank you. Yes. Good um, so speaking of documents and papers, I want to quickly, many of you have already done this, but there are some Moors who have not done nationality documents. Or they have questions about the nationality documents. So I want to go over that really quickly. The name change document only is what I'd like to go over right now so that we are clear on doing it. This name change document is in common English. Um, so, and it's, um, it's done so that for those who are just starting out. So this will be more Science 101. Okay. Um, we want to go through this really quickly, and then if there are any questions about it, we'll answer those questions because we do not want to forget our new Moors. You know, many of us are, are, are elevating in the knowledge that we're getting, and the ancestors are giving us lots of information that's you know, more, high more science information, but we we want to be sure that we keep touch with our new moors and, and that they don't get lost while we're being high-minded. We want to be high-minded because that's, how, that's who we are, but we want to make sure that we keep our Moorish brothers and sisters who are just waking up to more science. We want to keep them in mind. So I want to go over this really quickly, and then we'll we'll move on into um, another subject. So, for those who uh, want to, who may not, either you you haven't gotten your document, you have not downloaded a more name change document, etc. Or if you want to craft your own, you can take the wording that we're using here, put it on some Moorish government letterhead, and this can be your name change document. It is a universal sovereign appellation and proclamation affidavit. It is on Moorish government letterhead, and that letterhead is available to any Moors who want to use it. Any one of the bloodline and birthright is part and parcel for the government and can use government letterhead. So we give it freely. Whoever needs it, you can get it. And then use it for everything that you do so that your documents look like our documents. And also, um, Moorish American Consulate Public Records page on Facebook, you can go there and get it as well. Here is the document, Universal Sovereign Appellation and Proclamation Affidavit. This is also known as the name change document. And I just did it for myself. It says, I, Pauline Denise Ritchie, in capitis diminutio nolo, which means outside of the capitalist system. And in, that, that means in all lowercase letters as well. 
in capitis diminutio nolo, in propria persona su juris, which means under our own authority and in our proper person, in proprio solo, meaning sovereign, and in proprio heredis, being duly affirmed, standing squarely, declare and proclaim upon divine law, nature's law, universal law, Moorish birthright, international law, and constitutional law, declare and state, I, Pauline Denise Ritchie, in capitis nolo, and it can actually, it can say in capitis nolo or in capitis diminutio nolo. I'll just add in capitis diminutio right here. In capitis diminutio nolo, because that's how, what we're saying these days. Um, and I say it that way because when we first uh, nationalized, we were not saying that, but now we are. I, Pauline Denise Ritchie, in capitis diminutio nolo, in propria persona su juris, in propio solo, and in propio heredis, being previously unlawfully identified by the Union State Society of North America, USA, under the colorable wardship name of Pauline Denise Ritchie, and that's in black, and um, just the first letters of each uh, word is capitalized. And the corporate nom de guerre war name of Pauline Denise Ritchie do hereby rebut the fraud and proclaim my true sovereign status. I declare and affirm my true status and that I, Pauline Denise Ritchie, am the living and I am in capitis diminutio nolo, in propria persona su juris, in propio solo, and in propio heredis. And I proclaim my rightful life and my sovereign Moorish American nation. In accord with my Moorish nation at Northwest Amex of North America, I am hereby exercising all of my rights, my birthrights, at all times, not so tongue, having lawfully consented to and proclaimed my Moorish American nationality and birthright appellation and noble living title. Now, um, I'll stop right here where it says, uh, Northwest Amex of North America, we are also as well Al Moroccan. Okay, so let us, this is ancient Morocco. So that can also be put there. And here I'll actually add that in as well because again, throughout the, uh, throughout the ages we've been called, this land has been called by different names and so have we. And it, it, who we are and who, whose land this is, is determined by us. We get to say who we are and what the land, the, what we call the, the land. Some prefer Turtle Island. Some prefer Morocco. Um, and so, um, that is according to whatever the sovereigns say it is. And if one sovereign says they're Moroccan and another sovereign says they're American, guess what? We honor them both because they're sovereigns. They can say whatever they want to say about who they are because we are all of that at different points on the timeline. So I'll start right here. I am hereby exercising all of my birthrights at all times, not for time, having lawfully consented to and proclaimed my Moorish American nationality. And I'll even put Al Moroccan there. And some spell Al Moroccan with an A and some spell it with an O. It is at different times on the timeline, it was, it was both. So we will, for the sake of this demonstration, use this Al Moroccan nationality and birthright, appellation, and noble living title. In harmony and in accord with divine law, the universal sovereign customs and, law, and the laws, rules, and usages of the Moorish divine and national movement. Being original and indigenous and part and parcel of the North American Al Moroccan land by bloodline, by primogenitor, by birthright by natural birth, by universal divine law, and by inheritance. I hereby proclaim for the record that I have returned the presumed foreign 
foreign corporation, cognomen, and fictitious misnomer back to the colonial possessors of its pedigree. I am now rightfully declaring, publishing, and proclaiming my own free national status, appellation and estate, affirming my actual, rightful, and sovereign status as Desi Dance Fitted Tomb Returned Alive, which means the spirit returned alive. In Latin, that's what that means. My Moorish American Al Moroccan consanguine bloodline and national and universal honor. Let it be declared, known, published, and resolved that I am, and then you can put your sovereign appellation there, your sovereign-born appellation, or you can put your L and they there. In capitis diminutio nolo, in propria persona su juris, in propio solo and in propio heredis, by birthright and inheritance, without the United States Corporation Company, nor the foreign imposed color of law, or assumed due process of the Union State Society. All laws made by the state to the contrary of the Constitution and its treaties is notwithstanding. The supreme laws of the land are the governing principles on our land to include, but not limited to, the free Moorish American Zodiac Constitution. Number two, the United States Territory, Department of Justice, Moorish American Credentials, AA222141, Truth A1. Number three, United States Supreme Court, Supreme Law and Acts of State. Number four, the United States Constitution, and it lists those articles. Number five, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, United Nations Human Rights, number five, Article 15. Number six, Rights of Indigenous People, United Nations General Assembly, Part 1, Article 4. And then you, you would put wherefore I, and then you would put your sovereign-born appellation or your uh, Moorish uh, Al or Bay, L or Bay, there. Um, and that is a preference. That's a preference. When you do it in red and all lowercase letters, again, we're sovereign. We get to determine what we are called. Even though this says Pauline Denise Ritchie, I am still like Tajiri Bay. Still. Because that's who I say I am. And you can say who you are. And at any given time, I can be either one of those at my will. And that goes for all of us. The Rights on Indigenous People says, that we have the right to change our name and nationality at any given time. But that's only because they already know that we are who we say we are and not who anyone else or any corporate dictates. It says, wherefore I, and then you would insert your sovereign appellation there, being part and parcel named herein and by birthright, primogenitor and inheritance, make a lawful affidavit command and public notification of nationality proclamation. Appellation, Notification, Command, Declaration, and Affirmation herewith published for the public record. And then you would sign it in red, in all lowercase letters, with your right red thumbprint next to your sovereign autograph, and stamp and seal them if you want them stamped and sealed. The Moorish American Consulate can do that. Or it is actually preferable that you get your own sovereign stamps and seals. Why? Because you're part and parcel for the government. And you can use the same ones that we use, or you can use the ones that we use and then get one that you want specific to you as a justice and as a consul. Or if you're with other nations and governments, then you can do it that way as well. These documents and those that wording can be put on you know, Washita letterhead and the Washita can stamp and seal it, or it can be put on um, Cherokee Nation, the original indigenous ones, not the corporate other ones. Uh, but the original indigenous ones, they can use the same language on theirs. Any nation, any tribe, whomever can use those, can use this language. 
And any nation and any tribe can also use our letterhead to do it as well because we're one anyway. And that is how we have made so much progress is that so many were using the letterhead, the Moorish National Republic Federal Government letterhead. And so the corporates were seeing this letterhead coming and going. And they would pick up the phone and, and say, hey, John in Massachusetts, I got this today. Have you heard of this? And John in Massachusetts received five of them last week. So, you know, no matter which of those fake fraudulent corporate states that they were claiming to be in, they've heard of the Moors. So we all we have to do is keep doing what we're doing. We're doing all the right things. We're making all the right moves. And once this is done, then what you want to do is uh, the judicial proclamation the same way, the sovereign judicial proclamation. And make sure that you read through and study that proclamation so that you will know where jurisdiction lies, which jurisdiction is. We are the sovereign jurisdiction. We are walking jurisdiction. That's what no one told us previously in terms of when we were asleep. When we were asleep, they never said, hey, did you know that you are a jurisdiction, a walking jurisdiction, walking sovereign jurisdiction? So wherever you walk, jurisdiction you goes with up. you. Yeah. Okay? Wherever you go, jurisdiction goes with you. And that's why you can be standing right next to a court and be in a different jurisdiction than the court. You're on the land and the court is floating around on a piece of paper. That's how come we can say what we say and do what we do. We are the jurisdiction, the sovereign jurisdiction that is supreme above all others. There's no jurisdiction higher than the more. None. And when you're in conveyances and domiciles, because we're moving to that part now where Moors are claiming domiciles and conveyances, when you're in <clears throat> your sovereign conveyance or your sovereign domicile, then the jurisdiction sits there with you. It doesn't go anywhere else. The domicile is not in a different jurisdiction from you. And for anyone to get into the domicile, they have to get past you, and you have to actually consent to, their, to be in their jurisdiction by contracting with them. If we don't talk to them, we don't have a contract. Simple as that. We don't talk through the door. We don't talk to corporate. And I want to clarify something with that whole don't talk to them thing. There's a difference between a subject and a corporate. There's a difference. In many cases, because cause a corporate, some of, the, some of the corporates look just like us. They're sleep moors, sleepy moors. And when they're operating in a corporate capacity, we don't talk to them either because we're not speaking the same language. And when they're working in a corporate capacity, it matters not to me if it's a more sleeping more who is the manager of wherever trying to get me to put a mask on. It's not going to happen. Nope. It's not going to happen. Because that's not how we do. So policy enforcers, when when they pull you over, you pull over for safety on the land, but you don't have to say anything to them. But then subjects in subject status is different from that. A subject is a foreigner who's on our land and in their rightful status. That means they know they're subject to us. Then we can we can chat. We can chat as long as they remember that they're a subject and not try and wield any authority over us. 
that's the difference. But we're not saying don't talk to all of those foreigners on our land. We're not saying don't talk to them. We can talk to the subjects. We just don't contract with them because the contracts are already set. We don't contract with them for them to do to act on our behalf. That's what I mean. We don't you you wouldn't hot you wouldn't say, hey subject, I want you to put on a sheriff uniform and go and do and be the law for me. Because then you've just you've just elevated them to sheriff status and then they can turn right around because they're foreign. And if you look at the um Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, whenever someone is going out to do something like enforce the law, um, they have to enforce, they, they must be of the same nationality. That's according to the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, that when something happens where jurisdiction must be invoked, then they have to be of the same nationality. So that's what the vanguard, the Moorish vanguard is all about, as needed. Because there will come a time when we won't need the vanguard even. But that time will come. Why? Because there will be no one thinking, and we're, we're approaching that really quickly, um, but we still must we still must govern the land lawfully. But there won't be anyone thinking that they can change from being a subject back to being someone who thinks that they're a court. You can't jump from subject status to court status and then try to wield something over us. See, those people in the stores, in the grocery stores and all of those places, those people, when they first came, they came as subjects. And so that whole may I help you piece was coming from a subject, not somebody who could tell you that, that, that you can't come in without a mask. They're out, of, they're out of line. That's out of alignment. Because the heirs can do what the heirs want to do on their land as long as we're lawful and not harming others. And not wearing a mask by the heirs who are who we are genetically. We're not harming anyone. And if all of them have masks on, we're okay, right? If the mask really works. So that's what that's where all of this is going. That's the difference between a subject and the corporate, corporate any, any policy enforcer, we don't have to talk to them. We don't have a contract with them. We don't. And if they're trying to hand you some corporate paper of any kind, state courts included, we don't have to talk to them. We have our own court. Why would we talk to them? So... I wanted to go over that really quickly um, and, and make sure that we put that out there so that anyone who wants to draft or craft their own um, name change documents and proclaim their nationality, you can look at this video and the, the document that was put up there and recreate it for yourself and then just sign it. You can get on your computer and type it up and sign it in red in all lowercase letters and put your right red thumbprint right next to your signature and it's, it's, a, it's a done deal. And do that as often as you like. That's as simple as that. So we want to stay grounded in where nationality is concerned. We want to keep our eyes focused on the, on the real goal. And that 
our numbers are are higher than they've ever been. And we can thank social media and YouTube and all these other things for get you know assisting with getting the word out about nationality. And um, we want to keep that going. We want as many to nationalize as possible. Are there any other questions or comments about nationality, about the government letterhead, or anything of that nature? Any demonstrations that are being done, um, or anything? If so, star six. Okay. December 21st, we have uh, the winter solstice coming up. We are fully prepared for whatever the ancestors have for us. We already know that the energy that, that some have slated for that day, we're already operating in it. So in reality, that day is just going to be more of what we've been doing. And for those who missed out on the fast, this past um, new moon fast, if you want to fast on that day, feel free to do so, so that you can, that's just going to be more synergy. And on that day, those who want to go out to the mounds and things in your territory, go ahead and go out there, fast and and, and connect and, and further connect. We're all, we're already connected in the mind and in the heart and in the chakras, all of them. We're already connected there. So we're just going to continue connecting there. And as we set our intention and we see those energies doing exactly as we command, let's discuss it, let's talk about it, so that we can continue growing that synergy in our nation. We've had, we've been through so much. We've been through so much as a nation. We've been through so much. And we're finally seeing that we really are all that our ancestors meant for us to be, and all we have to do is keep doing what we're doing. That's it. We don't have to, all we have to do is keep doing what we're doing. And if there are no more questions or comments, or um, any testament, then we will conclude the call here and we'll start up again on Sunday. Islam. 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 Mikael Tunica Al Bay. Yes. So I wanted to um, just, I normally don't comment about my <laughs> demonstrations, but um, these, I've been going out to some of the malls and shopping areas and stuff. Um, and it's been quite, well, kind of have to work through that just seeing, because most places I go, I'm like the only one that's without the mask. And mm -hmm. so really just seeing all that, and it's, it's a weight to it at the same time, but you got to work through it. And then you just get to explain, especially to our young people, because um, they're mostly working in these malls and things. And they have no idea of who they are or anything like that. And when they, I've been finding out, when they find out from the little conversations I have and with them, I mean, their whole continents and their whole world at that moment change. You can see their eyes light up. It's like, really? Because when I'm showing my IDs and then I'm purchasing different things like that, um, and they're running the car and see that there's no tax coming off, and they're like, wow, how do I get this? So I'm giving out the, you know, the consulate website so they can go and start reading up on this and things like that. So it's, you know, been very impactful um, when I'm in the markets, uh, <laughs> you know, same, same impact. And so I'm encouraging everyone to, you know, people are looking, but, you know, just share whatever comes to your that gut feeling, and you will be surprised the doors that it open. Um, and lastly, the gym. You know, I, I do personal training as well, and things like that. So you know, I work out all the time, 
but just those uh, conversations because they see as more as, you know, and when we're operating on that plane that we're supposed to operate on, the energy um, that they see, you know, me as a, uh, I don't want to say elder, but I'm 57 now, but when they see, the young guys see that, you know, the energy and the endurance and, you know, that I'm putting in and they're like, oh, <laughs> you're encouraging me. And so then that's giving me opportunity to actually, you know, let them know, you know, that, okay, this is who you are. This is, mm-hmm. you have a responsibility also to this walk. So not just that, you know, the, the information. So when I give you this information, you know, I'm expecting to see, you know, you taking it to a different level, even with just exploring in it. So, and they're like, wow, yes, I'm on it. I'm going to look this up, da, da, da. And so even though I don't get the return, which I'm not looking for the return response, but just those seeds that's planted. And I think as we are out doing this, you know, this is the impact that's happening. So I just say that and encouraging everyone to continue, um, you know, walking in that energy and that light and um, just keep it moving. Islam. Yes, yes, Islam. Islam. Wow. Islam. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Nobility. Uh, Melanie Turner Lawrence Bay. Uh, yes. That was my younger brother, Mikiel Tunica Bay. And I just want to follow up on what he's saying is, but like, in I'm, I'm in the Jones County era outside of Macon. Mm-hmm. And I'm the only um basically more is here that's that's conscious. So you're surrounded around people that know anything about who they are. But one thing I say about Jones County, a great majority of people here don't wear masks. We were the last county to shut down and the first one opened back up in this country. I said besides uh a, I think it was Oklahoma and South Carolina. But actually, we never closed down because you, you have a lot of people here, brothers, sisters, more Abbeyons, with the open metallic about their rights and their health. Jones County became one of the only counties to enforce the Second Amendment. That they're not giving up their guns became the Second Amendment uh, territory here. Mm-hmm. So you do have an open uh, minded population here that's not going along with the U.S. corporate uh, scene here. And it's not easy for me, but it's more expectancy for me to nationally, naturally demonstrate because you're basically the only one that set forth that awakening here to the Morris Eric's and more identity. And I talk with a lot of uh, unconscious, melanated Moors that do have an open mind but it's their families that they're afraid that won't understand if they don't. So what I do, I invite some on a call, and, you know, I send information and some documents, too, and let them read on their own. You demonstrate to them that way. It's not a forceful thing, and you'll find out that they'll open up in their time period. Everybody has a time period, you know, for awakening and accepting who they really are and looking at, Self mastery of self. So it is good when you're in a territory by yourself because you're going to uh, naturally be demonstrating whether you're aware of it or not. And when I go to Walmart, I was there earlier this evening. I was talking to my brother on the phone, and I'm the only one in there without a mask. And the mm-hmm. folks at the doors, they knew because I demonstrated a month ago about it's my right. I don't have to wear a mask because what my rights are. I control this body and this land. And since then, they took down all the mass stations. They opened up the second entrance because I even told them, I said, how are you preserving the spreading the virus when you shut down three other exits and you got everybody coming through one exit and this big fan blowing? I said, the fan is blowing germs. I said, who's the general manager here? And I spoke with him. He said, well, I'm told. I said, but you're putting in people in harm's way. Open up the other exits and spread out. How are you going to get six feet 
through this door when you got one door open, and then you go from 24 hours to open a 7 to 8. You're inviting more people to crowd in here. Don't you see the science? And since then, they open up the other doors. They open to 11 o'clock now, and they don't talk about the six feet. Normally, it was announcing that in the parking lot on the um, the the loudspeaker. It was like he was living in a concentration camp. But since then, they cut all that, and more people are less active to wear the mask and asking questions really about this virus. And it's basically mm -hmm. taking control of their life losing the rights, yeah. our second and our first assignment our rights that we are that are inhabited to not everybody because most people are still strong people. But I see an awakening coming here where I'm at, and it's a slow one and it's not forceful, and it's just great. I know some brothers and sisters feel that they're the only one in the area and they have no one to back them up, but that's good because you're going to get more of a chance to demonstrate and more of a chance to study what you need to demonstrate. I yield. Yes. yes. You know what? That that um we were scattered for the for this time. That's what the scattering was all about. We were scattered so that we could be far enough apart to stand and not lean too heavily on one or the other because we need to stand on our own two sovereign feet. On our own land and so you know I can go days without seeing a declared more days without seeing a declared more and fortunately those days are getting shorter and shorter to where I can I see more is way more often now but my first year the ancestors was like no one's around you you're going to stand on your own and it doesn't matter that other people are not doing it. You have to do it. So that whole thing about peer pressure, it it was turned right side up. It's wrong. It was turned right side up. There is no peer pressure when you're the only one doing, say, telling everybody else that you don't have to do what they're doing. It's wrong. How powerful is that? that you're telling others that you don't have to wear a mask. And you're the only one walking around without a mask because most of the time around here, I'm the only one. And they don't even bother me anymore. They don't even bother me. They don't even bother I mean, it's... And that's the way it's... Islam. 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 And first right. I need clarity. I need I need clarity regarding doing my documentation. Um, I, I I read it through. I've been reading it almost every day, and it is directed to the United States um, government. Do I tweak it to suit the Trinidad and Tobago government, or do it as is? Uh, uh, they're 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 the same. The United States, United States Corporation, Corporation Company, Company and the Trinidad, Trinidad Corporation, Corporation Company. Company. Trinidad, Trinidad is registered, is registered on Dun and Brant Street in Washington, Washington D.C. Really? Under, Under the Service the Corporation. Corporation. Yes, they are. The bankrupt, the bankrupt non-existent district. Non because if you don't have if a if you don't have if you don't have if you don't have resources, you don't have resources, you don't really don't really but they're one of the same. One of the same. So you can so you, you can, can do it you can do it to whichever you prefer. Whichever you prefer. Because you if you if notice the agent, notice the agent is notice the principal. Notice the principal is notice the agent. One is an one agent of the other, of and one is the principal of the other. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I I I was at Price Mart this week, two nights ago. And you the were? guy said you at Price Smart in Trinidad. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
And the guy said to me, you cannot enter without the mass. And because I knew that I did not do the paperwork, I, I, my, mouth, my mouth was about to let him know who I am, but I, I was uncertain whether I should demonstrate or not. <laughs> <laughs> take your time. You get you you take your time, and when you're ready, do it. But I will tell you this: that you can demonstrate without the paperwork. I admit, I don't have my paperwork with me most of the time. And I so if if I, if, if I let them know who I am, okay, I am Olangu B. I am Moorish American National. I'm a part of yes. the federal um, Moorish National Federal Government. Yes. I'm not a Trinidad Tobago citizen. You're I'm not a, a citizen of Trinidad Tobago. You are not a citizen of that. And, and so if he says to me, you still cannot enter and then I can, I can leave them. Am, am I correct? Yes, you can. Yes, you yes. can. Okay. You can do a court action. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm, 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 I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Always, we always say, always demonstrate at the level of your overstanding, because we know sometimes it can be uncomfortable when you first start. Yeah. 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 And, and 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 this and does call you outside of your comfort of your zone because we've been we've been not really comfortable, not really comfortable but we got but used to things being, being a certain thing a certain way. Yeah. You know. You, I, I mean, I've I've been I've been, I've been I, yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And Peace when, and you, love, when you're ready, when you're ready, uh, Justice, when you're ready, you'll do it. You will do it when you're ready. Well, I feel like now is the time. Yes, it is. I just, yeah. So I've been preaching. I've been this. preaching. Yeah. I've been preaching for 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 the past oh, maybe thirty years, forty years, and I have seen what that did to people. And we thought we, that we were, we were free. I, we thought that we were delivered. Not only to realize, just our mind were under a spell. And it's time for true liberation to take place, true freedom to take place. Yes, yes it is. Yes. And that, that, is, that is, you know, it's going to call us outside of our comfort zone to do it, but we have to do it. Got to do it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I use. Islam. Yes, go ahead, Justice. I, I just wanted to be sure that that our brother from Trinidad knows that we we're, we're right here. We've been where you are, and we're right mm -hmm. here with you. You have our support, one hundred percent. Um, and uh, if anyone has any uh, suggestions, as he begins to demonstrate the mask there at Trinidad Territory, is there, if you have any suggestions for him, because many of us have been in that situation, then uh, feel free to, to um, assist him. Yeah, it's on um, uh, Melanick Channel Lawrence. Day again. Um, yes. I just like to add to that. Um, what I've been doing is going back over the last, ooh, let me say, 1997, 2007, 97, 207, 217. Last uh, 23 years of me being a high school football coach. And it's a lot of guys I got in college, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, that didn't go to college that I still communicate with. And I began to demonstrate with the younger generation because I believe that's what we need to bring along at their own 
time and speed because they have more time. If they're in our, you know, 19, 20, on up to as old as 30 years old, they have a lot of time, but they've been indoctrinated by the, you know, corporate universities too on how they should live and the things they should do, how they should invest the money and so forth. So I just begin to share uh, videos, share commentaries with them from the consulate, and even gave some of them the 605 number so they can enjoy on a call. They come on there. Probably not going to say anything for a while until they get a better understanding because, you know, they know they were indoctrinated, so you got to be unindoctrinated. But when I send things out, I'm beginning to get more and more responses, about 25 that I still communicate with, and we still talk, and I, I share things with them. And I see they're beginning to go through things. Um, and I say out of them, 23 young men, probably 40% are married and with families. And I know that's another struggle, getting their wives, Mm -hmm. to get on the same plane that they're beginning to climb. But I give them mm -hmm. time to do that. I say, don't force. You know, just keep sharing things as I shared with you. Don't force mm -hmm. anybody to do anything because they have an open mind. And once they open their mind and realization of the mind that can be open, they'll begin to see that who they were and who they told they were is basically not true. And they will begin to open up. And I think we have a great generation underneath us that we can touch. And to the brother on the islands that, you know, reach out to our youth. Get involved somehow with what they're involved in, and you can begin to touch them and turn that younger generation, which is the future of the Moorish community. And I just want to um, add that, share that, Islam, I yield. Islam, Islam, Islam. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else have any other um, sovereign suggestions for our brother at Trinidad? We just want to give him some support and some love. We want to send some energy your way because we know what that feels like. I know I do. Islam. We know what that feels Yes, Islam. Again, Mikael, Tunica El Bay. Um, so... I will share this. Um, in August, um, when I asked you guys about who travel international with our stuff, our documents and whatnot, so I found out that I was the first. <laughs> and so um, I got far as, you know, through D.C. and, you know, had a battle with getting on the plane for uh, Ethiopia, whatnot. So I had to make whatever adjustments I had to do there. Um, but when I got there, because I did not take any, you know, tests and all that, I was quarantined for seven days. But I left the airport in um, Addis Ababa, escorted by gunpoint. And um, so, I, you know, they had um, basically certain hotels already set up and everything like that. So... That was a test, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I've never been restricted and restrained, at, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, I wasn't left alone, you know. Yeah. And it gave me time to really dig deep. I used that time to research a lot of um, international law and jurisdictions law. Yeah. And so I was I researched the prime minister's email out and send, you know, his office emails and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, they had a doctor on staff as well. And so it gave me time, you know, to demonstrate. I demonstrated all through the airport um, going, even with the flight over, you know, I had my fez on, so yeah. didn't take that off. I didn't wear a mask on the plane. Um, so I was demonstrating as where I could. Um, Without getting locked up, but <laughs> at the same time, um, <laughs> and so um, when I got to the airport, you know, and it was great. At the same time, um, I didn't get all the results that I wanted, but this was the first time 
you know, people were hearing um, about, especially because a lot of our, their younger um, Moors, because they are Moors as well, um, working at airports and the stations. And so they're like, wow, we never seen this. You mean to tell me that this, you travel like this, this and that? Um, and so just the exposure. And I found out that, you know, on that level, um, United States, you know, because they're putting a lot of input into their airport over there, that they're not training those people because they're they're the ones who they I asked, you know, supervisors and stuff, so um who are they getting their training from? So they've been getting their training from the US embassy and their border control and stuff like that, which they're not training on on our stuff. Um mm -hmm. and so by the time, you know, I've, you know, finished there, you know, they pretty much knew who we were and, you know, known. Um, so these uh, alone demonstrations are really impactful. And, you know, even before I left Atlanta, you know, they had not seen our documents and stuff, even though I, you know, sent it for, you know, beforehand to um, TSA, um, Homeland Security, and all these places as well. And so they're purposely not training their people, um, but um, it was, you know, great to see and see our people's eyes light up and it was like, you know, this is what you're traveling with? Yes. Yeah. And so when I got to um, Ethiopia and, you know, was in that quarantine for a while, um, mm -hmm. I ended up communicating with the doctor every day. Every day he came, you know, time, you know, they were checking on me. So um, also my meals, by the time I finished with them, they was calling me asking, you know, what meals you want, you know, that, mm -hmm. that we can get mm -hmm. stuff ordered in or whatever, you know. So I pretty much changed the menu of what they had set. Um, so I've seen, you know, different areas, that, you know, from me demonstrating how they were changing. Um, mm -hmm. I actually end up getting released a day earlier than I was supposed to. And... So um, when I came out and, you know, I was waiting for my wife to come meet me. And um, so I end up talking to the armed guards outside and mm -hmm. explaining into the, um, you know, for lack of a better term right now, bellhops or whatever. And um, so I was explaining to them who they were, and you know, in our culture and how we're connected, you know, way back, um, because when I go there, you know, people are automatically start speaking to me in a mark because they can't tell the difference um, mm -hmm. until I start speaking. But by the time I left that hotel, um, we were outside waiting. They, you know, got me a chair, and it was like, you know, pulled up. So I had them out there looking up on their phones, looking up different information and things like that. So mm -hmm. I'm doing these demonstrations internationally, um, and, you know, this is where I see that we, you know, really have to attack um, that system to mm -hmm. um, free up our international travel and to free up our international commerce. And so it was a lot that was exposed. Um, even I attempt, because, I, like I said, um, I was kind of hesitating sharing that, but but I nationalized my wife did. already over there, so she's mm -hmm. actually nationalized, and so we tried to actually bring her back. So that was also a demonstration. So we had to pretty much their airport, international airport, tied up. I yeah. had several. Um, there all every supervisor that was there. Um, on point, um, you can talk to border control on the phone because they try to denationalize me and everything. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. telling them, you know, I know who I am. And you no, know, this is not who, you know, because they were saying, you have a passport, da, da, da. And, you know, so I, I, I worked my way through that with, you know, and tell, you know, they tried to wow. threaten me, and, you know, and so. Just dealing with all these uh, things, but it, at the same time, why 
they were doing all their checks and stuff, and they refused to give because they had the power to give my wife a visa right on the spot and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that, and, you know, I send, recently sent documentation, um, mm -hmm. our documents and a, a closed writ to the um, uh, acting ambassador um, to Ethiopia from the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's in mm -hmm. process, in route right now. And so, um, and I gave him the orders that's in the writ. Um, I won't go into details within it, but um, yeah. and uh, and so that's in process. But you know, and just going through, and it was pretty tough on my wife to um, you know, because we pretty much had her packed up. To, you know, come. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this was not an easy demonstration at, by all. Um, and so, but the impact that we had on that place, they are aware of, you know, our information they seen, um, even with me having to change flights and things like that, because I had to stay longer, actually a whole week longer than, you know, I intended to. Um, really to, you know, make sure she was secured and, and you know, all those things and, and her emotions and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Um, and so it, this demonstration impacted a whole lot of people that had no yeah. idea of our existence in this capacity that we're turning around, you know. Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to you know, the impact, because they know if they train these people on what they're supposed to be doing, and so we have to find out how we're going to get this enforced um, from each country that we're outreaching to, because mm -hmm. they're going to, the floodgates, that's what they're afraid of, it will open. Um, and so I kind of deal with that and just, yeah. help, you know, again, to help encourage everybody, you know, and I've been practicing, you know, really listening to the ancestors that's in me, my intuition, yes. and yes. walking out on that in different areas, even yes. with the um, Charles here in my area and things like that, you know, I, so all of my um, documentation went out. So, you know, I had just the other day a sheriff pull all the way up onto my um, conveyance that I used to go to work um, mm -hmm. and you know he pulled up and then so I was making I made my turn and um, all of a sudden so then I seen him fall back and drift you know away mm -hmm. and um, so just been you know keeping it moving and so yeah. I encourage yeah, everyone to you know when it's tight like that you know just keep going at what you know. and um, But like you always say, demonstrate on the level that you're comfortable in demonstrating that. Yeah. Islam, I yield. You know what? First of all, Morris, can we, uh, can all the Morris unmute and give him an Islam for that demonstration? Because that was powerful. Islam. Mm -hmm. Islam. Islam. Yeah. Islam. Yeah. Islam. Yeah. Islam. 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 That's encouraging. That's really, really dynamic. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. Islam. Make sure you Islam. can see the chat, too. Yes. Islam. That, yes. Yes. Islam. Yeah, I might follow up again. That's my younger brother, and that's something we've been talking about, how to expose our continent to other nations if we are to be respected as a nation. And we talk about that very much, and he had the hand-on experience. I had experience several years ago getting my brother home, who was a year older than me, Sabor, and his family from Saudi Arabia. And we had uh, the demonstrations through the Saudi consulate, the American consulate over here, and we were successful getting them to fly out, and they didn't have to pay a dime. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And I tied up the Pennsylvania senator and congressman 
to aid in that matter, which is the duty to do. When I read the documents and how they get involved in international, but basically I had to deal with the Saudi consulate and the Saudi, um, uh, you call him the Saudi, <laughs> lost the words right now, the consulate general there. Now yeah, speaking yeah. of, we feel that if we had a way to get our information out to other countries, I don't know whether it would be to other uh, embassies in other countries, or we do that individual, or in the future I may see a, a Morris Council committee being developed to deal with that specifically, getting the documentation out there. So when we do travel, if we travel, we go airport, they can type in and see, okay, Morris Nation Council. It does exist. Yes, yes. So well, this is I a forerunner say... on my brother and I mind of developing that pro se into a procedure where we can begin to implement this. And I think it'd be better for the whole nation, even in other states here. Every state governor or Congress should know about the Morris community and the Morris Counselor Court, they as well as beginning already. to derive that in the, you know, internationally. Islam, Islam, I will say this, they're good actors. They already know about the Moors. <laughs> they actually all took an oath to us. All of them, every last one, even in Ethiopia. They all have, they all have a copy of our constitution that we gave them, the American constitution. Okay. So they know about us, but they, but they're actors, and their job is to act like they don't know, because that's what we told them. Act like you don't know, so that we can, so that we know that we know who we are. Yes, in the chat, they want to know if we really know, and if we're willing to stand. So I mean, high honors. That's a powerful powerful demonstration that you've done very powerful and please give your send our love to your to your consort as well your wife as well beautiful demonstrations we're very very wow what an honor and very proud very very proud that's awesome that is amazing um, I say, I'm are, a are, mm -hmm. and i say i'm a sick alo that's thank you in their language. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, and remember now, we were fasting when they were fasting, so we're on the same page already. All we have to do is keep notifying, notifying, notifying. Now, when you talk about a plan to notify the other nations of the earth, that actually is going to come from each more, each and all of us, each and all, because when we operate the same way that we've been doing it, because, see, we push through the biggest, hairiest, boogie monster. We've already pushed through the biggest one. The biggest one was the service corporation. Is that, that, was, that was the biggest one, and that one has fallen. <laughs> so now it's a matter of notifying in writing and also on the public record. Anything that we need to do where we can put something out on YouTube and other places to notify ones that Moors are coming here or there, that can be done by all Moors, and I'm happy to do it as well. Moors are coming through. We're beginning to travel on other parts of our vast estate because that's our estate to Ethiopia and all of those other places because there are heirs there and there those heirs are connected to us by bloodline and birthright. And so notify, notify, notify the same way that we have overwhelmed the corporate structure here. We just overwhelmed them just by sheer numbers. Just by so many of us 
coming through, sending documents through. That is how we did it, and that, that's actually the best way to let all of those other uh, those others doing business as nations out there know. We're going to have to overwhelm them as well, and they've already been, they know about us already, because the thing is, notice the agent is, notice the principal, that's true. And anything coming from here, the ones doing business at State Department, they put everybody supposedly on notice. That's what they did previously in that capacity. And so now we're the ones doing the notifying because we can speak for ourselves. We don't need any State Department corporation or anybody to speak for us. We do the notify. You did the right thing. You notified and, and everything. Let me ask you, um, did when you quarantine, because I have not spoken to anybody who went through that yet, uh, when you quarantine and they say seven days quarantine or whatever, is that, uh, is that a tab that they pick up or do they, or do they have you to pay for your own quarantine? Oh, no, you have to pay for your own quarantine. They had several different hotels. And I know it's a, you know, economic thing national, worldwide that's going on. Um, so, you know, it was one way for certain hotels to, um, to signed up for that to actually, you know, make, um, you know, finance off the deal and things yep. like that. Yep. Yeah. So you had to, um, kind of uh, see they had a list out of the rates for those um, types of hotels and I go far as to say um, you know I have several um, hotels that I associated with over there um, one of um, the general manager um, that I'm connected with um, I end up staying back at his hotel when the night when we couldn't, you know, I couldn't get my wife, you know, on the plane. Mm -hmm. So I end up going back to his hotel. And, you know, just a favor, you know, when you walk out on these things, when you feel like you're, excuse me, when, when yeah. you feel like you're alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, yeah. Ancestors are there. Yeah. And um and you know and when I showed up at back at the hotel it's like midnight. Everything is, you know, shut down. They had to actually mm -hmm. call the person to the desk that was there and you know mm -hmm. and I'm like, This is who I am, you know, I don't pay no tax nowhere. Da da da. Yeah. Um and called the general manager because, you know, he was asking for different information. I said, just call the general manager and he'll tell you. And so they end up giving me the best room, you know, they had there in the hotel. Um, I didn't pay, like, because my flight was going to be um, later that night, late, like about 10 in the evening. So I didn't pay for any extra time that I stayed there. Um, and the other hotel that I stayed at um, um, was a friend, um, but I made made friends, you know, from me being over there and just sharing our culture and you know our connectedness. And so um, his his father actually lives in Atlanta. I never met him. But um, so I stayed at this hotel after I got out of quarantine um, at about half the price of the rate, you know. And so when we stand on what we know and who we are, and you know, because yeah. um, it's, it's I've been you know since I found out who I am, and I've been walking on this wherever I go, and so. Mm -hmm. I tell them when, you know, because I said, you know, we're basically, you know, the Moors, and, you know, in here in, in America, you know, we're almost like your mother in a sense. So, yes. Um, yes, we you know, are. Uh, I'm standing on those words of authority. 
and as the heir to Tunica, to the Louisiana Purchase, and to the France and Spain land grants and Washington yeah. proper, and you know, so these, you know, I've always been kind of hesitant of speaking certain things in public because I don't want to have too many roadblocks in what I'm trying to do, but. Mm-hmm. We're here now, and so, um, yes. but I, you know, this is what we, um, you know, are designed to do and claim yes. our bloodline, you know, yes. and so. Uh, you know what, I they've yield. been waiting for us to do it. They've been waiting for us to do it, and we're just, we're so, we're so proud of you. You, you present the Moors very well. You present us well. We're very proud. You present us so well just for standing because we know, I know, even though I have not done that demonstration, I know that they've been waiting to see us, but they want to see us strong, and you did that because you could have went, you know, you could have, you could have, you know, because some have chosen to just go back into citizenship for that reason, but you chose not to. How honorable is that? And um, I would also share that before the COVID um, fraud came out, um, I went down to the um, African Union. And, you know, I tried to actually enter. This was before I actually nationalized, um, you know. Um, But I went down to the African Union and, you know, tried to, you know, get in based on who I was, my bloodline and things. And um, But, you know, I, um, I believe in, you know, putting that seed out. And wherever I go and wherever I stand, I'm putting that imprint. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, when I go, I wear my, um, not just the Morris flag, but also the Washita flag. And, yeah. you know, the questions that people um, that draw out of people, you know, brothers that are standing on corners there and, you know, and they'll stop and ask you, you know, was, you know, I, I walked past a group and they was like trying to guess what the flag was that was on my sh- shirt, and um, I, you know, I had to stop and go back and tell my wife, oh, I just can't walk past them, and so I stopped and went back, and you know, by the time we finished having a the conversation, it was like, wow, okay, thank you for you know, just doing that, so. I say, you know, all this to say that when we go with our gut feeling and know yeah. that that's the fourth brain that's in your gut that's telling you to, um, you know, you got to trust it yourself. And that comes yeah. with what the prophet said, uh, knowing yourself. And I claim him as my cousin, even though he belongs to all of us. Yeah. But this is, you know, the stance that, I believe I'm taking, and, you know, and nobody can tell me otherwise now that I know that I know. It's not yeah. my yield. Oh, Sorry we about the emotions. We, no, we, love, we feel you. We feel you. I got goosebumps just, just listening to what you're saying. Just high honors. You have, you have actually uplifted all of us today. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Thank you for that because we're inspired now. I mean, more think about it. We're doing our demonstrations here. He's doing, he did one, you know, out there. We love it. it I hope you can see the chat, Noble, because there's a lot going on in the chat where the energy is concerned. It's the energy is high, very high right now, very, very high um, because of what I'm you kicked said. out now, but I feel it, definitely feel it. Yes. And I ask yes. that the energy continue to my wife because I'm coaching her. Yes. And it's hard because of the 
sort of her language barrier for her to actually understand. So I got to really break things down slowly, and I'm, you know, encouraging her to walk in her nobility and her royalty over there, you know, as she goes out and just, you know, walk in it. And um, it's challenging because, you know, they they have not been colonized like us in a sense, but they're being colonized through the corporate sense of, you know, world banking and yeah. even challenging their um, the Orthodox Church there that they're, um, you know, kind of attacking um, to yeah. incorporate that as well. So, yeah. Islam. Well, you know, nobility, that's capitalism trying to break out over the years. That's capitalism. Islam, yes. And, it's, yes. and it's, it, it is done, a great part of it is done through those churches. Yes, yes. And they're coming in droves over there. Yes. And I say and, um, the the not just the either, but you running in, I'm I'm running into people from all over the continent of Africa there in Addis Ababa because of the African Union is there one and so in these hotels, you know, I I I've been confident enough to walk up and just invite myself into these circles of communication with people where I feel led. I had I'll share this and then I'll be quiet. The um I, we were out um, getting some dessert one night, and it was, you know, in the restaurant hotel, um, not the one that I was staying in, we went to an, um, Best Western over there, and um, we were in the lobby, in the restaurant lobby, and out of all the people that was in this hotel, um, and I'll, I'll also say I did not wear a mask where I went out there, even though they were masked up, my wife was like, you have to wear a mask. The police will, you know, come get you. And so I stood on that. And no, I did not. Um, but I, we were out um, having some dessert, and this brother walked up from, he was from, I, he lived in, um, Europe somewhere, but he was from uh, Can Congo, and he walked up to us, and we were sitting down, and he was like, I need to talk to you, um, that, you know, I know, I just got to Ethiopia, I have no friends, whatever, and he was a banker, um, young brother, he was a banker, and he's like, I need somebody to talk to, you know, to connect with. And so I, you know, I'm running through all the checks, you know, scam this, or that, whatever, da da da, and um, and I, my energy felt that he was sincere, and I was like, well, I'll be leaving tomorrow, and so, but we still connect, and you know, I said, you know, here's, you know, put your number in my phone, here's your number, you know, we'll, you know, feel free to call me, we can chat. You know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, share what I knew there. And he was so elated about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, we never know who we're going to run into and who, how we're impacting it. And I know when we impact one, that it's impacting another one, especially if they're mm -hmm. being imprinted, they're going to share. This time I yield. Oh, beautiful, beautiful demonstration. Beautiful demonstration. We're with you when you do those demonstrations, too. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Justice Mel Melnick, for sharing that, and Justice Mikael, Mikael for sharing. Those, those, that's just beautiful. Just, wow. We're blown away, really blown away. That is actually what this is all about, and it's actually time for us to start demonstrating at that level. It has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere. It might as well start with us. And it, as long as we know to do it, 
without arguing and without war energy, then we have every right, and not it's not just the right, but it is our responsibility to stand on who we really are. That's our responsibility. It's a duty. We, it's a national responsibility. Islam, beautiful demonstration, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. We're, we're just inspired. We really are inspired. And it's fitting uh, for co- just coming off of this fast um, as a nation. We got this. We got it. We have got this. And the rest of the earth cannot wait to see us in our strength and standing. So we had to stand here, and now we're going to have to stand everywhere. They can't wait for to see us stand. And the moment we stand, you're going to get the treatment that he got when he got the best room and the favor that he spoke about. But we have to be willing to stand. We have to. So I'm, I'm going to, at this time, um, I want to say really quickly, this coming Saturday is Justice Jira Moore's solar return. So next time you speak with Justice Jira Moore, if you'll wish him a happy solar return. And also today is my mother's solar return, so I wanted to say, uh, give a shout out to my mother who has transitioned, so she's still here. We are our ancestors returned, and I can feel her spirit here too, even in all that we're doing, even in all that we're doing. So with that being said, peace and grand rising to the airs and justice. Please continue sharing your, your, your experiences with us because it's just amazing. Thank you so much for that. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Much love, much love. Beautiful. Peace and grand rising. Beautiful. Peace and grand rising.